All right, what's going on everyone? My name is Cameron. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be doing another Towery tutorial. Uh, and today we're going to actually be looking at how to create a custom menu bar. So what do I mean by custom menu bar? Well, I mean this bar here. Uh, this will be similar on Windows, except it's, uh, I believe, a little more integrated into the actual window. Um, but basically, uh, just some uh, common utilities um, that are used for your, that can be used for your application. Um, in this video, we are going to be looking at basically how to get these options to appear, uh, how we how you want them. So uh, how to get a sub menu, how to get menu items in the sub menus, uh, as well as the uh, traditional app menu. Um, and then in the next video, we're actually going to be looking at basically how to listen for events and then take those events and translate those into uh, something that your application can actually do something with. So, uh, so let's jump right into it. Um, I'm going to first create, uh, we're, we're going to be doing this in our main.rs. Uh, so inside of source towery within your towery project. Um, just for, and just for context, uh, this is just a bare bones towery project. If you don't know how to uh, create one of these, I will uh, link the card up in the top right so that you can uh, so that you can follow along with that tutorial. I have one of those on my channel. Um, so yeah, source towery, source main.rs. Um, so we're in our main.rs. I'm going to go ahead and create a function here and I'm doing this I, I could be doing this within my main function but I'm doing this just for the sake of code uh, code cleanliness uh, I'm gonna actually create a uh, create a function so let's see here all right go yeah let's create a menu this is going to return a menu so you see, I get my code completion here. Uh, I, I'm going, it's going to try to import menu for me. Uh, and then we're going to actually return a new menu. So in this case, we're gonna do new menu, colon, colon, new. Uh, and then we, uh, we could just leave it at this. Uh, and then say uh, in our main, what we'll want to do is is we'll want to at, right after the builder default, uh, we will want to do a menu, and then pass in create app menu. So that will run, and our app will come back up here in just a second now that we've saved. So there we go, and you can see we don't really have much of anything here. Um, what, what we had before was just the default. So uh, there is a default that gets set up whenever you, uh, whenever you first initialize a Towery project. Uh, it's going to uh, reload and I'll show you yeah, what I showed you before. This is the default. Um, so it has just kind of uh, a set of default uh, options, right, that, uh, that comes shipped out of the box. But we're looking at creating a custom menu and therefore that's what this function is going to do. So the next thing that we wanna do is let's go ahead and let's just add something simple to our, our app menu here. We wanna get a, a dropdown going for that. So what we'll wanna do is you want to go ahead and say add submenu now it's going to take a submenu. So this is something else that we will import from Towery. Uh, and we want to say new. Now we're going to pass in a title. And this is actually very important. You want this title to be app. Otherwise it will uh, it won't be our it won't be this uh, app this application menu. Uh, that's kind of a special reserved reserved word. And then we are going to want to create a new menu under that. Um, so we'll say new menu, um, just like we did before. 
and then we're going to add native. So this is going; these native items are going to be um, like you could do like the about, you could do um, quit, those kinds of things, and that's actually what we're going to do in this case. We're going to do menu item, and this is going to be an enum. Uh, in this case, we are going to do. Uh, you, as you can see, we have like about, we have closed window, copy, cut, enter full screen, and all of these have things that they uh, that they can do. In this case, we are just going to do quit and then save. I'm going to go ahead and format this a little bit so that it uh, so that it's easier to read for you guys. And then we're waiting on that to rebuild. There we go. So now our app is up. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Oh, I did not mean to click that. There we go. And now you see we have the quit option here in our uh, here in our drop down menu for the main app uh, sub menu. So if I if I click quit, that works. So let's go ahead and get this started again. And while that does its thing in the background, we can start talking about adding another menu. So that's that's up and going again. Um, and obviously uh, it says Command Q, uh, that should just work, right? So Command Q just works. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the, the keyboard accelerators in a bit. But for right now, uh, let's let's focus on getting these. Uh, let's focus on getting another menu put in place. So the next one that we'll do is we will add a new sub menu. Uh, so so the cool thing about this, uh, and it's a very common. If you're not familiar with Rust, this is a very common pattern. Is these menus are uh, they they use a builder pattern. So anytime you do something uh, like add sub menu. Uh, then it's going to return uh, it's going to return an instance of itself of this of this menu um, and so that way we can just chain these add sub menus um, this is kind of kind of similar to like promise chaining if you're uh, if you're familiar with that uh, from the JavaScript world um, and so in the case of like uh, promise chaining you uh, can think of like um, returning an instance of whatever it is that you're trying to return after uh, through each then of your promise chain. Um, that's kind of what's happening here, um, but it, it's very, very useful. Uh, so let, let's go ahead and do add submenu. Uh, we're going to do a new submenu. And in this case, I'm gonna say file. And then I'm going to, in this case, this isn't a reserved keyword. It's just uh, it's just a menu item, just a menu item that we are going to create. So this is going to be a new menu, uh, and then we're going to add item. And now we are going to actually create a custom item. So let's go custom menu item, new. And I want to say I want to give this a uh, an ID. So this ID is going to be very important in our next video that we uh, that we watch. But for right now, uh, you can just think of this as the identifier for that specific uh, that specific menu item. So new to string, and in this case, I'm just going to say new. Uh, I want to go ahead and add another. Uh, I want to add, add another uh, another menu item. So in this case, uh, we are going to uh, do dot add item uh, again custom menu item new we're going to give this one an open dot to string uh, to string and open I want I kind of want the yeah there we go I was going to say, I want it to format a little better than that. And you can kind of see that this menu, as we go through, um, 
you can kind of see thanks to Rust Analyzer how that's actually uh, how that's actually being returned as we go through, right? So you can see that it's a menu, it's a menu here, then it's a, it's still a menu after we add that sub item, it's still a menu, uh, and and that's how we are actually returning that menu item. So let's jump into our app. You can see now we have file and we have the new uh, the new the new the new menu item and the open menu item. These aren't native. These are custom and they are something that we will like I said we will hook into in uh, in the next video. Um, and so the only other thing that I guess I will show here is we'll we'll add two more items. Um, one is a native I need to do that on this side of my my uh, comma. Uh, so custom menu item, oh, not custom menu item. I don't know what I'm doing there. Uh, menu item, and in some cases we'll have uh, you'll have separators, right? So separating groups. So that's what uh, so that's something that I want to do here. Uh, let's go ahead and do separator, and then we'll add one more. So add. Uh, I'm going to add a item, custom menu item, new save dot to string, and uh, in this case we'll just say save. There we go. And so now once that uh, once the build finishes and the app comes back up, we should see a separator, and then we should see. Uh, this new save item under file. So if we go to file, you see we see we have these new the new we have open and we have save. And you can imagine that this will get really big. Um, this could be this might be a an entire module that you extract, right? You might want to have a menu module and then actually uh, you know one by one because you can imagine like what this itself would look like, right? It, this would be rather large. Uh, this is, you know, this is an example from VS Code, right? But uh, you can imagine that, like, if you had all of these, this function would be huge. And so, if you want to keep your main, uh, your main RS file clean, you might want to. Uh, that that might be something that you want to uh, consider is extracting this. But um, that said, uh, I guess the only other thing now that I wanted to talk about are accessors. Um, so the keyboard and the accessors, the keyboard accelerator. So I can on these, I can do accelerator and this is going to take a string. So this will take CRL CMD uh, plus and I think is what it is. I don't know exactly if that is. Uh, if that is exactly what it wants or not. Uh, something that I've, yeah, see it panicked because it doesn't know that key code. So after reviewing, it looks like what we need is CMD or CTRL plus N. I believe that's the, uh, that is the, the key code that we need. Um, I need, to, I haven't done enough research to know. I know that this, this is usable. I don't know if they actually have enums for those. Um, if not, that would be a really welcome change. Um, but anyway, uh, the only thing that I have to say about this is I, I so this is how you can, you can represent those. Um, you know, we, we could do the same thing for, uh, for this, except change it to O and then, uh, do the same thing here, change this to S, right? Um, and, and you'll see kind of why I'm doing this specifically. Um, but that's, that said, you, you can see how that works. Um, the only thing is, is it looks like that actually might be working. So I may, I may be fibbing. Maybe they have fixed that in a more recent update. Um, but I know I, I was, as of the last time I checked, there was an open issue where basically the web view itself was intercepting the uh, the key and the key commands. So that's something to keep in mind is that might still be an, a lingering issue. And we'll, we'll look at that more tomorrow or uh, tomorrow in the next video. Um, 
whenever we're actually setting up the events for this and handling those. But um, yeah, that, that's basically all I really wanted to cover is uh, that's how you get those accelerators to show up because um, I know that that's pretty common for most apps. Uh, anything here in the file menu um, will generally have some sort of keyboard shortcut. So um, yeah, no, I think that's about everything for this video. Like I said, in the next video, we're going to be going over uh, basically taking the IDs from, uh, from each of these menu items and translating those into something that the application can actually do something with. Because uh, right now, all we've really done is made our app look a little more professional. Um, so yeah, so thanks for watching, everyone. If you have any suggestions for future videos, don't forget to leave, the, leave those down in the comments below. Let me know what you think about these Towery tutorials. Uh, if there's any, anything um, that I could be doing better, obviously feedback is always welcome. Um, if you like the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. I, I always appreciate the thumbs downs as well if there's uh, something I could be doing better. But of course, leave comments for, uh, for what that could be. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.